Hey guys, welcome back to the Engineer Dangler. I'm here talking about UV resins for clear coat and not continuing my build on the swim bait uh, design and build. I just haven't had time to make any progress on it. I've been swamped at work and like most of you guys out there, I got to do a nine to five. So I want to go ahead and cover a bunch of questions that I've had uh, from a lot of subscribers and a lot of folks that are just watching the videos. And subscribe come on so anyway here are the questions I've been asked what's the best way to apply the UV resin well I mean you can go with the dip and drip method where you take a pretty good size volume of uh, the liquid the UV and then you dip your lure in it now this seems really quick and easy and it kind of is but there are some real drawbacks to it one it's really inefficient as far as the quantity of uh, material that you really have to have on hand to be able to dip. Now remember, you can't just get out what you need. You're actually dipping in a larger volume. You've got to be able to cover the whole lure and then pull it out. So you're always going to have some amount that you're not going to be able to use. So it's not the most cost effective way. You can certainly dip it, pull it out really quickly. It's a lot faster than brushing it on. But the problem is that you've got to let it drip. It's got to drip for as much as five or ten minutes. If you don't allow enough time for it to drip, you'll end up with a very misshapen end of your lure because it will set pretty quickly and it'll sag. Time-wise, it really is only a time savings in my uh, calculation if you're uh, actually doing large uh, batches. So if you're doing 20, 30, 40 lures at a time where you're dipping, hanging, dipping and hanging, that's it's probably a more time effective way to do it. But if you're like me and you're doing two or three or four or five at a time, then uh, brushing is really the best way. The other drawback is the sort of maintenance of the material. When you open it, you're exposing this material to light. Uh, and if you're not doing this in the dark, and if you're not doing this in the nighttime, you have a real good chance of getting UV light through windows uh, in the cracks of doors. Uh, and this thing will start to set very slowly uh, but we'll slowly, you'll notice it, it'll start to get more and more viscous and less and less likely to off-gas the bubbles that you do in train. Now the good part of doing it is that it's simple. No brushes to take care of and you, you have theoretically a better chance of keeping the bubbles out to begin with. Now the other methods of putting on, of course, what I've just been talking about is brushing it on. That's a simple, simple enough method. You don't have to use a special brush and you don't have to throw away the brush. You can keep that brush as long as you protect it from the light and you can reuse it on the next uh, application. But you can also spray this stuff on and if you take and thin it with a little bit of denatured alcohol, I use about a 20% by volume uh, thinning ratio. Uh, you can practice or uh, experiment with uh, what, whatever is best for your gun. I use my airbrush to spray it on and that 20% seems to work pretty well. The benefits of spraying it on is that you can really lay on a very thin coat and if you're trying to make a small lure with a lot of detail on it look sort of very precise and uh, delicate you can do it by spraying it on. You can also uh, use it tinted and actually uh, tint the surface of your lure with tinted UV clear. The other question I get asked a lot is whether you need to use a turner on UV clear. You don't have to. You don't have to, in fact, you don't have to use a turner on any clear, right? If you don't mind it sagging and sort of looking a little uh, oblong in the end. But lots of folks uh, dip and drip and are happy with their results. So I'm not going to say that you have to put it on a turner, uh, but I, that's my preference. I have the opportunity to stick it in the turner, allow it to turn. It gives that even coat. It also allows you to put a heavier coat on at once, right? Because you don't have to let it all drip off. So you get a nice thick coat, you let it turn for a while without the UV light on, and within five minutes, uh, the bubbles that you might have put in there with the brush have come to the surface and popped. The other question I get asked a lot is sort of technical questions about the UV light to use. Uh, my recommendation is that you use uh, a UV light that ranges in wavelength between 365 to about 385, 390 uh, nanometers. All the, the resins I've bought so far uh, prefer right at uh, 365. I have seen people 
using uh, a lower wavelength, getting down into the UVB range. And I, I really don't recommend it. I believe any of these resins are really designed to be catalyzed at, at that uh, range. And as far as the amount of wattage to use, my advice is to get as much wattage as you can afford. My UV chamber is 72 watts. And that means there's eight uh, 9 watt bulbs in there. I can turn on four at a time, and that usually works pretty good for small lures. People ask me, hey, should I go LED or fluorescent or incandescent? Don't go incandescent, it's too weak. Fluorescent is what I'm using, LED is fine. The key is to have the right wavelength and enough wattage. The other question I'm asked a lot is, can you use a mirror in the reflective surface? So you'd like to have a reflective surface inside your curing box just to keep that light bouncing around. Uh, make better use of the of the wattage that you've got in there. And yes, you can uh, as long as you're in the UVA range. The glass in the mirror doesn't uh, sort of filter out that light. Since I already said I, I prefer to use a brush to apply the UV resin, let me explain to you how I take care of it. I, first of all, you can store your used brush, which you're going to reuse, uh, in just something that blocks the light out. This is just a piece of foil that's folded over and I just stick it in there. It's just a little open-ended envelope and then I'll stick this in a dark spot so it doesn't get exposed to any light. That's the simplest way to do it but I, I come up with this little cylinder. I like this better because it doesn't mess with the uh, brush hairs and this is a real simple little build. All it is is one of these little containers. I bought like a pack of six for three dollars I think um, in one of the Nahabi stores nearby and all I did was I wrapped it in some uh, foil tape. And it's as simple as that. I put two wraps on it just to be certain. And you can see this lid pops off and it's just a very simple little lid. You cut the hanging loop off and then you drill a hole in the top of it just big enough where you want to jam the handle of your uh, brush in. So let me stick this thing in one of the clear ones so you can see how it ends up. And you can see it just a little distance from the bottom it's suspended in there so it doesn't get messed up and and you want to put this lid high enough so that when you reach down into the UV container you can get down in there without bumping this lid the bottom is a little bit indented and a little hard to, to seal up with that uh, aluminum foil you can just paint it if you want to or what I did is I jammed a piece of clay that seals out the light and gives me a little extra weight so it tends to stand up. It's a little easier to, uh, for me to stick it in a drawer. Since you're going to use it over and over and over, you might want to consider spending eight or nine dollars on a good brush that has real good natural hairs and the right size for the application that you're going to use it. A quality brush will let you put that UV clear on there and, and minimize the bubbles you add to it. And after you've used it a few times, it's easy enough to clean. What I do is I take about a tablespoon of acetone and I pour it into the acetone lid and then I just simply dip this brush in there and then swab it off with a paper towel. Continue to do that till I'm pretty satisfied I got all the resin out of the brush and then I'll wash it off just a little more and wipe it down with a, a lintless uh, cloth and then maybe blow it off with compressed air. You're done and you can just store it for the next time. On the last video I asked if you guys wanted to see shorter or longer videos on these builds and it, pretty much everybody said make them a little longer so I'm going to 20 minutes on the next one. An extra 10 minutes can get us way down the road getting this built so I'll catch you on the next video.